I would say God is a, a spirit. spirit. The question is, what kind of spirit is he? He holy, is holy, holy, spirit. holy spirit. So Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, God, that's all the same. But the name of God, the name of the Holy Spirit, the name of Alpha and Omega, the name of the Lord of heaven and earth is Jesus. Jesus. That's his name. Now do you get me? Two more questions real quick. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still struggling with the, the coming out of that whole Trinity thing. And, uh, yes, sir. Uh, th parts in the Bible where uh, like Jesus was uh, praying in the garden, you know, praying to God. Yes. And, uh, I'm wondering how that, how, how does that stand right now? Like that. Wonderful question. I'm not, I'm not even sure how to word it because. Yeah. Look, I got you. I understand. You know why? What's your name, brother? Uh, Christopher. Chris? Christopher, yeah. Christopher? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I can remember that. My brother's name is Chris. I can, I can help you with the so-called Trinity because he used to be one. That's why I got to pound on him with the word in case them three gods come back up. <laughs> now, first of all, Chris, the word Trinity have never been in the Bible. They say Trinity is three distinct personalities. If you get a, any one person with multi-personalities, what do you call them? Imagine a schizophrenic God. God is a spirit. St. John chapter 4 and at verse 24. Fulfilling heaven and earth and even above that. He's divine. He's eternal. In order for us to be redeemed, because Adam fell by disobedience, bit of the fruit, sin came into the world. And everybody that was born in the world was conceived in lust and in sin. So a remedy or a cure had to come into play to take away our sins. Death was needed, a sacrifice. God couldn't die. Because God is spirit, and the spirit don't have blood, and you can't kill God. The nature of God is divine. So in order for us to be redeemed, God sent prophets out to prophesy about his coming. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the 35th chapter, your God will come. I want to read that quickly. Amen. Come on, son. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter, chapter 35, 35 mm -hmm. and then the Bible says, let us know what our God will do when he comes. Isaiah 35, we'll start at verse 1. No, let's go right to the point. Your God will come. Isaiah chapter 35, we'll start at verse 3. You got to move quick. Strengthen ye the weak hands Strengthen and confirm the, the weak feeble knees. hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart. Be strong, fear not. Why? Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Now, pay, I want you to pay close attention, Chris, and to everybody else. And you will understand Jesus Christ being God Almighty. Your God will come with vengeance. Will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. And what? He will come and save you. Hold it. Who will come and save you? He will come and save you. But didn't Jesus save us? That's right. But how many saviors do we got? Oh. All right. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. Yes. He will come and save you. And when he come, what are you going to do? Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Jesus did that. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Jesus did that. Then shall the lame man leap as in heart. Jesus did that. And the tongue of the dumb sing. Now hold it. Here's God being eternal. He bears the title Father, Creator. In order for a sacrifice to be given... God had to come. How did he come? He made a body, a physical body of flesh and blood in the body of Mary who was of the tribe of Judah of the house of David. And the flesh that Mary birthed was called son of God. The son was a body. God that made the world was in that body. That's right. 
To you which? Listen at this. Second Corinthians chapter five and at verse nineteen. That's what. To which? To which? That God. That God was in Christ. Was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. So He couldn't reconcile us the way He was being Spirit because the Spirit had no blood. So He formed a body, and the body was called Son. And God was in that Son. God was in that body. The reason why He made a physical body because the physical body represent the church the body of Christ and just like the spirit was in that body the spirit is in the church and just like the physical body left an example for the world how to live holy now the church got to live an example for the world how to live holy, live holy. now <laughs> Jesus that natural man when he would pray to the father it wasn't two gods. It was two natures. Nature. What do you mean? Your flesh is a mortal nature. The spirit that is in your flesh is a divine nature. That's right. It's not two of you. It's just two natures. Right. There's a human and the divine, but it's still one Chris. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? So Jesus, when he walked earth, the body was human, but the inner man was divine. And the same inner man that was divine was the same Lord that created the universe. So the purpose of him making that body was to leave an example for the world. What to do, what not to do. Holy Ghost is the same thing as Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit as God. It's just another title for God. The Bible said God is a spirit. a spirit. The question is, what kind of spirit is he? He holy, is holy, the holy, spirit. holy spirit. So Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, God, that's all the same. But the name of God, the name of the Holy Spirit, the name of Alpha and Omega, the name of the Lord of heaven and earth is Jesus. Jesus. That's his name. Now do you get me? So the only difference was in nature. The man was human. The spirit of God was divine. And whenever you would see Jesus pray, that was God leaving an example in the flesh to teach us how to pray. What's that? Do we have two natures now? No. The only reason why he needed the human nature here to leave an example for us. He don't need a human nature now. Now, the Bible said, are we the sons of God? See, now we have what he had, flesh and blood. And now by us having what he had, we have now the flesh and blood. Now are we the body of Christ. Now are we the sons of God. Now are we to show forth the pattern of good works. He got one nature now, and it fills heaven and earth. So when you pray to God, you got to pray to God and call on his name. That's what the Bible said. And whatsoever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do you get me now, Chris? Hang around. You'll get more. And you that never been baptized right. You've been baptized, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You no more baptized than a duck can preach. You was baptized wrong. The Baptist baptized wrong, the Catholic do, the Methodist do, the Presbyterian do. The Bible said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. When Jesus said in Matthew 20 and 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I'm a father. I got a name. I'm a father. I'm a son. I'm a husband. I'm a preacher. I'm a fighter. But I got a name. My name is Jennings. The name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Alpha, Omega, beginning, the ending, the first, the last, the rose of sharing, the, living, the lily of the valley, the Lamb of God, the rock, the highest, the stone. The name is Jesus, and he's the Christ. Are you getting me? All right, let's close out with Acts 238. Houston, 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 Houston. Houston. Amen. All of you that bow your head and raise your hands, you've never been saved. Amen. You that have been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you've never been saved. You that went to some Catholic church.